I have an important personal decision to make, but I need to discuss something with you first. Phew, thank you. So, where to start? Um, before I was with the Navigator Corps, I was career military, part of the United Colonies Navy. When the Colony War broke out, I was posted as the Chief Navigator on a warship, the Dauntless. In my case, I was third in command, which has a lot to do with the story. There was a particularly bloody battle. We were fighting over a world in the Ata Cassiopeia system. Worst fighting I'd ever seen. We lost 12 ships that day. 12, including my own. No. This is important. I need to tell you this. The ship was barely intact. The captain and first mate died the previous day, which put me in command. A shrewd captain would have called for the crew to abandon ship, but I was so angry. I wanted to stay. I needed to fight. The Dauntless was a tough little ship. No shields and the hull was breached, but it still had power. And weapons. That's why I remained in the battle. Huge mistake. Well, I didn't have the luxury of indecision. I had to act. We fought for hours, but the damage was fatal. I gave the order to abandon ship and the crew piled into the escape shuttle. As the shuttle launched, I could see it was damaged. I... I heard screams before the radio cut. The last thing I saw, they were... spiraling helplessly towards the planet's surface. There was... There was nothing I could do. You're sorry. For me? If I hadn't been so stubborn, so eager to prove that I could handle command, my crew would have had more time to escape. My superiors. When the dust settled, the United Colonies gave me a medal. Can you believe that? A damn medal! I never even had a chance to find the shuttle wreckage and give my crew a proper burial. After I checked every section of the ship for wounded crew, I took the other escape shuttle. If I hadn't, I would have died. The Dauntless came apart minutes after I escaped. That's true, but still, it doesn't erase the real issue here. Remember when you said no one but me would have pushed harder to keep the Navigator Corps going? Well, this time, pushing too hard cost lives. Don't you get it? Everything I do, everything I touch, somehow falls apart. That's why I'm worried about us. You still have faith in me. I don't even know what to say. I never realized how much you cared about me. You know, I spent a lot of time thinking about us. 
about our relationship, how we've clearly become close. I practiced what I was going to say when the moment was right, and now that it's here, my mind's gone blank. <laughs> uh, look, you deserve the best. Someone who can give themselves to you entirely. But right now, I have too much baggage, too much on my mind. I hope you'll forgive me for pushing you away. I just need time. All these ruins have certainly stood the test of time. Ever since we talked about the Battle of Cassiopeia, I can't get what happened out of my mind. Was it that obvious? I thought I could handle these memories, but until I return to Cassiopeia, I'll never be able to put this to rest. The last time I saw my crew, their escape shuttle was headed for the planet's surface. I need to find the wreckage to ensure their memories are honored. I would like that. Actually, I need that. One problem though, pinpointing the crew's shuttle wreckage is going to be like trying to find a grain of salt in a sandbox. I think we need to start by locating my old campsite on Cassiopeia 1. The Dauntless took heavy fire to the docking section during the battle. We had three shuttles. One was destroyed, and the other two were damaged. There was no other way off the ship. What's there to tell? I survived. My crew didn't. Still, oh, I'll never forget my finger hovering over that launch button. Would I launch safely or explode into a fireball? It turned out that my shuttle had just enough power to allow an emergency landing on the planet's surface. I wouldn't call what I did a soft landing, but thank you all the same. My shuttle should have the telemetry tracking data for the other shuttle aboard. It should give us an idea where it went down. That's if scavengers haven't completely stripped my ship for parts. Hold on. I don't know the exact location of my survival campsite. For that, we are going to have to head to Mast and see if we can get the information from my old friend, Admiral Logan. Your instincts are right on target. Logan and I butted heads more than once during my time with the Navigator Corps. We've never seen eye to eye. Look, I hope this isn't asking too much. Last thing I want to do is drag you into some kind of personal crusade. That's why I'm desperate for your help. Truth is, I'm scared. When I set foot on Cassiopeia, I don't know if I'll be able to handle what I find. If I begin to fall apart, I need someone I can trust to hold me together. I know you will. You've always been there when I've needed your help. Why you continue to support me, uh, I'll never understand. I... I don't know what to say. Uh, I've been so busy searching the stars for answers. I've overlooked what's been in front of me all this time. True love. Something I've seriously considered sharing with you for a long time. Just... not ready. Not yet.
You're right. I have. Hey, um, anyway, I've taken up enough of your time. I know you have a lot to do. I really appreciate your offer to visit Cassiopeia. Hopefully, it'll bring me the closure that I've needed for far too long. Sarah Morgan. It's been, what, almost ten years? Admiral, it's, uh, good to see you again, sir. You're not required to address me as sir. That protocol ended the moment you dropped your clusters on my desk, remember? Look, Admiral, I'm not here to open old wounds. Old wounds is an interesting turn of phrase, given our past. Listen to me, Commander. I'm not sure why you're here, but whatever it is, why don't you just get to it? I'm here because I need your help, Admiral. You need my help? That's interesting. The last time we spoke, you made it quite clear that you were turning your back on the Navy. That was a decade ago. Things change. People change. Admiral, please. I didn't come here to argue. I'm here to come to terms with my past. Your past is sitting in a closed file in the archives. That's where you left it when you walked out on the United Colonies. And what about you? Just who in the blazes are you anyway? Very well. Then, as a good friend, perhaps you could kindly explain to me why I shouldn't have the both of you escorted from the building. With all due respect, Admiral, this is ridiculous. If you have a problem with me, then there's no need to berate my colleague. I don't have a problem with you, Commander. I'm simply trying to determine why you deserve the Navy's help. That's quite a noble gesture. Is this true, Commander? It's about Cassiopeia, Admiral. I'm heading back there to find out what happened to the crew of the Dauntless, and hopefully, to bring their legacy home. That sounds like a dangerous operation. Are you certain it's worth the risk? I... I don't know. I see. The fact that you'd risk your own lives to solve this mystery speaks volumes. They were my responsibility, Admiral. One way or another, I intend to bring them home. I understand. And I believe I owe you an apology, Commander. Our last encounter has obviously distorted my impression of your character. What can I do to help? If you wouldn't mind allowing me to access the files regarding my rescue, I'd be most grateful, Admiral. That shouldn't be too difficult. I've sent all the relevant information to your slates. Was there anything else? No, Admiral. Thank you. You don't need to thank me, Commander. I just hope you find whatever it is you're looking for. We've knocked out their shields!
Done. I can't stay here Gavin all day. Fly safe. It feels like walking into a dream. Oh, it's been nearly 20 years, but it feels like a lifetime. Strangely, this place looks exactly the same as I remember it. But that isn't possible, right? Just like a dream. I'm okay. It's just so surreal. Phew. Okay, so... Let me get my bearings for a moment. Yes. Yes, this looks correct. Those rock formations nearby look familiar. My old campsite shouldn't be far. Knowing that is the only reason that I'm here. <sighs> Once we get to the campsite, we'll use that as a starting point to search for the crew's shuttle wreckage. Let's go. Well, this is it. This is the spot where I spent close to a year waiting for rescue. Not exactly Paradiso, is it? Oh, I never said I walked away. When my ship hard landed on the surface, it broke apart. There was no fire, but I was... Well, I was pretty badly injured. Had to crawl from the wreckage. When they finally rescued me, the UC medics said I had three broken ribs, shattered my ulna, and had internal organ damage. I was in the medical ward recovering for almost six weeks. It was... difficult and painful. But it kept me alive. It was home. Look at this thing. It's been sitting here rusting. I think we need to grab an emergency power cell to get the ship's computer up and running. Sure, we have plenty of power cells on the ship, but they're not UC military grade. They won't work. I'm afraid we'll have to do some scrounging. Sure, if we're lucky. When I was stranded, I set up a distress beacon powered by emergency power cells. The beacon was up there on the plateau. I guess it's time to start climbing. We've located where the other shuttle went down. I can't believe our plan worked. Well, we're not there yet. But damn, it does feel good. Hmm. The telemetry data puts the wreckage out of range to hike. We're going to have to head back to the ship and land on a different part of the planet. Let's get going. Sustained far more damage than my own. Oh, those poor 
swords. This is what's left of the crew's shuttle. But it looks like parts were scavenged and dragged somewhere else. Could there have been survivors? I have to. Just turn around and, and leave. I know how to use this thing, and I will. Oh my god. Who are you? I'm nobody. Just go away. I'm not going to let anyone take my stuff again. No way. Both of you, just go! Yeah, sure. Try and trick me. No. No way. I I'm not getting fooled again. Forget it! Stop it right now. Put away that gun and talk to us. We want to know what happened here. See? You're not nice at all! I knew it! You're a liar. That's all grown-ups do is lie! Sorry. Sorry. <clears throat> I was wrong to get so angry. We are here to help you, and we promise to tell the truth. I don't know. You're kind of scaring me. Why should I listen to you? Crew. No one's been looking for that crew since before I was born. So tell me another lie. Go ahead. You were born here. Hold on. Oh my god. Your parents. Your mum and your dad. What were their names? Jenna and Elias. Why? Jenna and Elias. Private Jenna Marsh and Corporal Elias Oberist. You're their... daughter. Listen to me. I knew your parents. They worked with me on the Dauntless. I'm Commander Sarah Morgan. You're Sarah Morgan? Mom and Dad's captain? My parents used to talk about you all the time. It's like a dream to finally meet you. I know this is Cass... C Cassiopeia. I've been here since I was born. I know my mother and father were from Gemson or something like that. I bet it's like a thousand miles away. My parents told me she was in command of their ship in a huge battle. They said she was a hero and the bravest person they ever knew. Yeah? Well, I wish you wouldn't have taken so long. My parents are dead. My father died a long time ago. And my mother, she was killed by those, those monsters at the graveyard. It's just me here now, all by myself. Let me ask you a question. Oh, actually, I don't even know your name. Oh, yeah. My name's Sona. Sona? <laughs> what a lovely name. Sona, you mentioned a graveyard. Is that where the crew is, um, you know? Buried? Yeah. It's a bunch of stones with those necklaces like the ones my mom and dad had hanging on them. Thank you, Sona. 
I'm going to talk to my friend here a minute, okay? Okay, Sarah. Phew. I don't even know where to begin. Whew. Yeah. That's probably good advice. Oh, there's so much to process. But I don't have time to deal with it right now. If you want to help, then find that graveyard and bring me those necklaces Sona mentioned. I'm hoping they're my crew's gene tags. Good. Just be careful. Sona's monsters are undoubtedly hostile life forms that have claimed the graveyard as their territory. dangerous to stay here all by yourself, darling. I don't care. This is my home. You can't make me leave. We can't leave her here. It's not safe. She has to come back with us to Jemison. Oh, I don't know what to do. Can you talk to her? I know, I know. I'm not proposing we knock her out for God's sake. <sighs> Look, maybe you can talk some sense into her. Help her make a decision. I just... <sighs> I'm sorry, I can't do this right now. I can hear you talking about me. And I don't care what either of you say. I'm not going anywhere. Look... I'm clearly out of my element here, and not in the right state of mind. Could you just talk to her, please? Why won't Sarah listen to me? I mean... I mean, kinda. I just met her. The only reason I'm trusting you at all is because my mom and dad said Sarah was a good person. I know she probably wants to help me out, but I really wish she'd listen to my part of the story. That doesn't make a lot of sense. She's only known about me for a little while. That still doesn't mean I should leave the only home I ever had, does it? Mom and Dad told me there was a whole universe out there, with thousands of planets. They showed me the maps and the star charts. That does sound pretty cool, but, well, it's also kind of scary. It would be hard to leave the only home I've ever known. Well, I've always dreamed of finding a place that's safe from the monsters. But uh, leaving mom and dad behind, it's really hard. Even though they're dead, I don't want to abandon them. I am safe. Those monsters can't catch me. They've tried, but I learned how to trick them. They're pretty dumb. And if bad people visit here, I know how to hide. I was even watching you when you landed. I bet you didn't even see me. 
This planet doesn't bother me. That's why I'm not sure I need to abandon my mom and dad. Yeah, you're right. I never thought of it that way. I'm sorry I yelled at everybody. I know you and Sarah are just trying to help. I'm going to go get my stuff and then I'll board your ship. Don't worry, I'll stay out of the way until we get, well, wherever we're going. That poor girl. I hope we've made the right decision. I realize that, but there's still cause for concern. We're ripping Sona from the only home she's ever known and casting her back into society. It's going to be difficult for her to adjust to the changes. Wherever she ends up, just promise me we'll check on her from time to time, please. Thank you. Look, um... Before we leave Cassiopeia behind, I wanted to say one more thing to you. Perhaps at the Overlook we passed on the way here? I promise it won't take long. Let's go. Before we head back to the ship, I wanted to tell you how much of an amazing gift this has been. You had to push me to come out here, and if I hadn't have listened to you, the universe would probably have never known about that little girl. And I intend to repay you for that, even if it takes the rest of my life. You know... This is the second time I've been on this world, and until this very moment, I never stopped to reflect at just how magnificent it was. Oh, look at this place. This is the reason I'm out here, exploring the stars. Worlds upon worlds, just waiting to have their beauty discovered. Shedding this burden of my past has finally allowed me to open my eyes, wider than they've ever been opened before. And it's all because of you. Perhaps. I suppose we'll both have to think about that for a while now, won't we? <sighs> well, I suppose it's time to bid goodbye to Cassiopeia once again. This time, under much happier circumstances. Now, let's head back to Jemison. I want to give those gene tags you gathered to Admiral Logan and figure out what we're going to do with Sona. Let's get this crate into space. Did you find your answers? And we did it for the child that was marooned there. A child, born from two of the crew, that survived the crash. After her parents died, that poor girl spent years surviving on that hostile world, alone. We abandoned her, Admiral. We let her down. I'm sorry. I had no idea. How could we have possibly known?
Sona. Is that her name? She must be a remarkable young woman. She's extraordinary, Admiral. And I'm afraid the United Colonies let her down. You're absolutely right, Sarah. We did let her down. One thing that I can assure you is that the names of these men and women will never be forgotten. I'll see to it personally. Thank you, Admiral. Good luck to both of you. It's been an honor. Once we're done here, we should have a little talk with Sona. Poor thing's waiting for us at the lodge. Yes, what? You must We should probably talk. There you are. I was wondering when you'd come and say hi to me. Hello, Sona. I see you found your way to the lodge without any trouble. Yeah, it was kind of hard, though. All these people around. Never seen so many people in my entire life. I think I like it. I don't know yet, but it's all really new to me. You'll fit in just fine. You're one of the smartest people I've ever met. So, what do you think? Do you like it here, Sona? At the lodge? Yeah, this place is huge. I mean, I've never seen anything like it. You must be like a bazillionaire, Sarah. <laughs> oh, don't I wish? This place isn't mine alone. It belongs to everyone who's a part of Constellation. And I think it should belong to you too, Sona. I want you to stay here and make this your home. Whoa. Does that mean I get to go exploring with both of you? Or wait, do I get my own ship? Well, uh, Auntie Sarah can't exactly afford that right now, but she can provide you with the best exploration training in the galaxy. I understand. Oh, and don't worry, I learn real fast, so you better get ready to have another member of Constellation signing on for missions. I can't wait. Well, anyway, thanks for letting me stay here. I promise I won't let either of you down. I'm sure that you won't. Well, I think we should let Sona get settled. If you wouldn't mind, I'd like to visit the Colony War Memorial now. I want to, uh, to pay my final respects. Let's get a second opinion, shall we? Walter and I were just discussing the expenses incurred during the attack. No, I was explaining that there's nothing to discuss. It's been taken care of. It seems that Walter has taken it upon himself to cover the costs of the repairs to both the Lodge and the Eye, as well as any expenses relating to the... to the funeral services. Barrett, for all his antics, was an essential part of this group. And a friend. Well, it's not about looking for thanks. I just... It needed to be done, that's all. The Colony War Memorial is actually quite lovely, in a solemn sort of way. Actually, yes, I do. Here you are. If you think it will help, then feel free. It had to be blind luck. The shuttle had almost zero propulsion and no defensive shielding. It would have taken a hell of a pilot to land the ship without it breaking into a million pieces. 
I've been giving that a lot of thought. I'm going to suggest she stay at the lodge, but I don't want her to think that I'm forcing her to follow in my footsteps. At the very least, it should give her a safe place from which she can adjust to her new way of life. If you'll just bear with me, I promise I'll explain everything. The Colony War Memorial is actually quite lovely, in a solemn sort of way. If you'll just bear with me, I promise I'll explain everything. The Colony War Memorial. You can't get rid of me that easily. It's amazing to think that this tree predates New Atlantis. Mm. Can you imagine all the changes it's seen? Look at this. All these people, their entire lives distilled down to names on a memorial. I wonder how close I came to being reduced to just a name. These people laid down their lives for what they believed in, and it cost them dearly. I served shoulder to shoulder with them, and watched some of them die. I know you meant well, but they'll always be more than a name to me. And I care about you too. There's obviously some kind of a connection between us that I think we need to discuss. Just let me have another moment here, and then we can head over to the waterfall, so we can talk in private. Okay, I'm ready. Let's go. When things at the lodge are too much, I love coming to this spot to just sort of, I don't know, melt away for a while. It's lovely here, isn't it? <laughs> I've been from one end of the settled systems to the other. This place, this exact spot, there's nowhere else like it in the galaxy. I hadn't thought of it that way, but you're absolutely right. I usually come up here to mull over some of the heated debates we have at Constellation. You'd be surprised how many decisions I've made on this very spot. <laughs> uh, is it that obvious? The truth is, I've asked you up here because I wanted to talk about something very important. No, nothing like that at all. I just have a lot on my mind, and I am terrible at getting right to the point. I know you are. Just give me a moment. I have a lot I need to say. It's about my return to Cassiopeia. 
What we learned about Sona has been constantly replaying in my mind. Oh, maybe it sounds crazy, but that young girl's isolation feels like a reflection of my own life. In all honesty, I don't. She simply reminds me of my own isolation. Maybe not in the literal sense of the word, but I certainly relate to some of her loneliness. Am I? I've spent my life surrounded by all sorts of people. Constellation, the Navigator Corps, <laughs> hell, even the UC military. Despite that, no matter how hard I've tried to make them a part of my life, they tend to drift away and disappear. I suppose. Well, if that's true, this challenge is wearing me down. Right now? Are you talking about Constellation? Or what exactly are you saying? Ha! Huh. <clears throat> Sorry, I, um, I just need a moment to gather my thoughts. From things you've said in the past, it's obvious you want to have a serious relationship. You want to become close. So, if you're willing to take that leap of faith with someone like me, then I'm ready to do the same. You're something truly special. You know that? You've helped me conquer my self-doubt, my confidence, hell, everything. For the first time in my life, I feel complete. <laughs> and with you by my side, I'm convinced that feeling will last forever. You're the best thing that's happened to me in my life. I love you. Always. When you have a moment, I'd like to speak to you. I received a message from my mother a few days ago. She's returned from another one of her sightseeing cruises. Yeah, you know, one of those luxury liner journeys that shows off binary stars, gas nebulas, asteroid fields. <laughs> Pretty photogenic stuff. Apparently, it's my mother's new favorite pastime. Ah, oh, that's right. I haven't really spoken about her to you, have I? My mother lives in a fairly remote location, so we rarely speak. Tends to keep her out of my mind. Good. When I say that to most people, they look at me like I'm crazy. I don't think they realize how much control parents can exert on your life. Especially when their dreams conflict with your own. No, we should have discussed this a long time ago. You see, both of my parents were diplomats working under the flag of the UC Administrative Division. After I completed my basic education, they signed me up for a one-year apprenticeship in their department. Without bothering to ask. Look, I was 18 years old, fresh out of school, and I idolized my parents. I trusted them. I'm certain they felt they were doing what was best for their daughter. Who was I to argue? Mm, wanted isn't the right word. Demanded would be more appropriate. For my apprenticeship, I was sent to Sidonia. My job consisted of drafting political policies and arbitrating trade disputes. The silver lining of the job 
was that it allowed me to spend time exploring every square inch of Mars. I was swallowed by it. Months before the apprenticeship ended, I dumped my diplomatic certification and joined the UC Navy. Of course, my parents didn't approve. We had a huge argument that resulted in all ties being severed between us. Well, that wasn't the worst of it. You see, my father was killed during the opening shots of the Colony War. I returned to Jemison for the funeral and reunited with my mother. After that, we vowed to stay in touch. Oh, aren't you sweet? Always concerned with how I'm feeling. That's why I fell in love with you. Your smile, your caring. <laughs> it brightens even my darkest days. Listen, I'm going to be completely upfront with you. All this talk of family, it makes me wonder where our own relationship stands. <laughs> you mean that? You do that? For me? I've been dreaming about this moment and still... I don't know what to say. <laughs> yes! Yes! Of course! Yes! Ah, I just need a little time to think about the ceremony. I have some thoughts about how we should move forward. You know, I used to dream about finding the love of my life. And here you are. All I ever needed was you, right here beside me. <laughs> <laughs> 